all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so in my last talk near the end of the talk i did talk about the sexual and non sexual transmission of mpox or monkey pox virus however i believe some of the cool beans did not watch it till till the end so i received a lot of questions about how does monkey pox or mpox transmit uh, by the way it is called mpox nowadays and it used to be monkey pox so i thought i'll do this video only about the transmission so uh, i will share my screen as well so this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link that can give you access to amazing lectures here is uh, cdc on mpox spread so let me first uh, quickly um, provide the basic fundamental um, rules of transmission number 1 the person who is infected will have the monkeypox virus or mpox virus in their wet surfaces or epithelial surfaces so what are the wet surfaces for example the eyelids uh, sorry eyelids the eyes conjunctiva and so tears would have it the nasal surfaces are wet surfaces or epithelial surfaces so nasal snot or secretions will have it mouth and the whole git is a wet surface the whole respiratory system is a wet surface and epithelial surface so saliva would have it anus would have it or and the internal parts of the anal canal will have this because that is epithelial surface vagina and vaginal secretions will have the virus because these are also wet surfaces and epithelial surfaces and similarly the urinary tract is also epithelial surface then because in this particular disease there is a rash or rashes that can appear on the body and they can appear anywhere away from the genitalia those rashes at one stage they open up and they kind of become leaky the fluid can be touched and that fluid can actually end up on the bed sheets it can end end up on the clothes on the surfaces as well that fluid of the rash mpox rash also has the virus so these are the sources of the virus also in pregnant women the uh, virus can travel from infected mother to the fetus and similarly that this is called vertical transmission similarly a newborn can also catch it from their uh, infected mother so this is a basic principle that the the virus is present in the secretions bodily fluids and on the wet surfaces now how does the transmission occur actually one more thing here the transmission can occur through respiratory tract as well if somebody has the virus in their mouth area and then they are laughing and coughing and sneezing and they are close in close contact face to face it is possible for respiratory transmission as well so far it has not been um found out that the virus can be present in stools and in waste water also the chlorine recommended chlorine levels in the us water these kill the virus so with these few fundamentals in our mind let's just quickly see how the transmission would occur so let's say a healthy person male has sex with a an infected person who may be a female or a male that means it may be vaginal sex or anal sex or oral sex with an infected person as i said last time penis actually has a robust skin usually viruses cannot just enter the penile skin however during the sex it is possible that penis would develop microscopic lesions or tears and the virus from from the infected individual can actually then enter those penile lesions and then under the skin of the the penis and the it can infect the local tissue and then it can spread through the body as well and infect other parts this means that lubrication can help reduce this because there is less friction and that would cause less tears in the skin or condom use will also help i said this last time as well and i'll say it again why not just avoid sex for 2 3 weeks instead of you know uh, trying to have sex with an infected person but still these are some of the safety measures 
on the other hand hands also have microscopic lesions and and cracks in them especially with the with the people with the dry skin who develop more commonly the cracks in the skin if hands come in contact with the bodily secretions either in the genitalia or anal area or the mouth or nose and etc or the the rash which is kind of uh, weeping which has the secretions coming out of it then from the hands as well the virus can uh, enter the body similarly if a person has an injury a lesion and then they come in contact with another infected person who may also have some bodily secretion then that injured area can allow the virus to enter now the virus not only is present in the bodily secretions and the and the wound uh, secretions the these fluids can end up on on uh, inanimate objects surfaces sheets these are called fomites then if those fomites are not disinfected correctly then a person touching them or coming in contact with them can uh, receive the virus as well so sexual contact contact of a healthy person with the unhealthy or infected person of their secretions without even the sexual contact the fomites and the pregnancy these are all even the respiratory system these are all the routes of transmission so let me now very quickly go over the similar information here on the cdc so there are two clades 1 and 2 both clades can spread through direct contact with infected wild animals through close contact including intimate or sexual contact with a person with mpox or through contact with contaminated materials so close contact direct skin to skin contact again it is important that the person who has uh, infection has the virus on their on their skin either in the form of a rash or they touch their own genitalia or mouth or nose and they have it there and the person who is coming in contact with them has microscopic lesions in their skin as well or have some injuries through which it can enter so direct skin to skin contact with mpox rash or scabs from a person with mpox contact with saliva upper respiratory secretion like snot or mucus and the bodily fluids or lesions around the anus rectum or vagina from a person with mpox pregnant people with mpox can pass the virus to the fetus during pregnancy the vertical transmission or to the newborn during or after birth direct contact can happen during intimate contact includes oral anal or vaginal sex or touching the genitalia penis testicle labia vagina or anus hugging massage kissing prolonged face to face interaction which would then allow the respiratory transmission to occur then touching objects the fomites so fabrics surfaces clothing bedding towels fetish gear or sex toys symptoms start until the rash has fully healed and a fresh layer of skin has formed so this is when is a person spreading it most of the time when a person has the symptoms appearing which would occur anywhere from 4 to 20 days of incubation that is when they start shedding or having virus in their secretions although in some cases there have been people who have been known to transmit the virus during the incubation time 1 to 4 days before the start of the symptoms there is no ev- evidence that suggests people who never have symptoms can spread the virus to someone else cdc is monitoring then infected animals so small wild animals coming in contact with them or after hunting processing them that can cause or coming in contact with their secretions or their wounds can cause transmission as well now can mpox spread through water in pools hot tubs or splash pads no studies have found a clear link and then they say mpox virus is killed in water at the chlorine levels recommended for disinfection in recreational water venues by cdc and required by U- us jurisprudence uh, jurisdictions so this is the transmission i had this link last time as well but i did not put the link in the description this time both of these links are in the description this is mpox and safe sex i do not want to repeat this uh, i have already talked about it but if you like you can go over this one and they have multiple recommendations 
for mpox and safe sex so this is the this is the discussion it is just today's video just purely only for the transmission because many people were uh, asking the, about that now let me just quickly see a couple of questions if there are any and then we will uh, we will be done so uh, andy says petting outdoor cats is safer safer than petting humans uh, i would simply say that petting <laughs> any uninfected thing or person or entity is okay compared to infected one um then bob says i'll have to watch the previous video so i i think near the end i had done this discussion so now for your convenience i'm doing it once more uh, then obed says uh, love lovely timely thank you very much uh then uh So somebody said not complying. So this is this these videos are not to ask you to comply or not comply. Anyways, your your declaration of compliance is here. These are uh, mostly for our own health and our own safety. Although, as I discussed in last video, the risk in the U.S. is at the moment low. Um, so Hank Solo says, is it possible to get it from a bathroom somehow toilet seat doorknob? So if the person who is infected, let's say, touch their mouth or nose or anus or some secretions, their own wound that has a, the virus in it, and then they touch the knob, they did not wash their hands, then yes, if somebody else comes in, if the, the um, secretion is present there fresh and the virus is still viable, then yes, they can get it. If the secretion was there and many days passed and the secretion dried out and the virus got killed, then the chances reduce. But yes. Uh, Forbidden says, just the idea of penile lesions squicks me out. So uh, every time when there is sex involved, of course, with the penis, then uh, depending upon the duration of the sex, penis will develop microscopic cracks and injuries or lesions. This is normal and it happens and nothing uh, bad. Uh, is the outcome. However, in this case, those lesions become useful for the virus to enter. That is why condoms and, and lubrication. Lubrication would re reduce the, resist, uh, the friction and reduce the microscopic tears, and condom is just uh, good. Similarly, gloves are very important as well. Uh, Jean says, droplet or aerosol. So, um, that is a good question. I did not find the droplet size to be able to say, would it be aerosolized or not? I think it will not be aerosolized, but I do not have the backing up evidence for that. Good question, Jean. So Blue says, is it showing up in the San Francisco wastewater? So as I said before, the wastewater has not so far shown it anywhere. So it's not about San Francisco or any other place. I, I understand what your inclination with the question is, but no, it doesn't appear in the wastewater so far and the, the chlorine levels in the water kill it anyways. Guy, Guy Tef, uh, Telfer says in sweat. So that is also my curiosity. I haven't heard anywhere if the sweat contains it, or I haven't read it anywhere where the sweat contains it. Ideally, sweat is also coming from epithelial surface. So ideally, or in theory, sweat will have it too. So Ran says it is very rare. So in the U.S., it is uh, uh, there is no uh, prevalence or no danger, as I mentioned it last time as well. Uh, majority of the risk, and I don't want to repeat my whole video from last time. Majority of the risk is Republican uh, Republic of Congo and the the countries near. Okay, so. So this is very important. Dr. Muhammad Salman says, can we get it from patient contaminated surfaces? 
Absolutely. So these are fomites and that is what I've been discussing. Absolutely. If the patient has it in their bodily secretions, they touch them, then they, they touch other places. The fabric, the sheets, the clothes, the towels, the, the surfaces, the doorknobs, everything can have it. So with this, thank you very much. Links are in the description for your further um, reading. And I would see you again. This Friday, we'll do a chit chat as well on your asking. So I would set up the chit chat now and leave it for the Friday so you can do the notifications. But anyways, that is the discussion. Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. And the links to support this channel are in the description. I would love your support with this. Bye bye.